friends. So if you see somebody that you really enjoy seeing and you didn't expect to see them, epinephrine will be released into mm. your body. As well, acetylcholine, which was the neuromodulator that you mentioned, is released and acetylcholine acts like a spotlight. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned, when we're excited by something and we're stressed, our pupils dilate, which actually causes us to go into a bit of a tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. We don't always experience it as dark around the edges kind of tunnel, but we don't see the big picture, literally. It changes the optics of our eyes. We get much better at, at seeing individual things. If you've ever been in love, you've experienced this because the person just seems to occupy your entire visual field and your entire emotional field, as it were. So there's this kind of soda straw view of the world. Not always bad, it can be good as in falling in love or being excited about something. And acetylcholine is a molecule that's released in the brain that is marking or highlighting the specific areas of the brain that are active during a particular event. So one way to think about this is if you decided that it were important to you to um, say, learn a particular language or to learn all there is to know about something that's very vital to your life for some mm -hmm. reason. The information would literally be highlighted as you read it in your brain, and that would make it easier to learn. So, but the actual learning doesn't take place while you have that acetylcholine swimming around in your brain and highlighting things, or the epinephrine, the adrenaline. It happens later when you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. The reorganization of the brain happens in deep rest, sleep and things like it. And so this is why sometimes people will work very, very hard at trying to make a change and it's just not happening. It's not happening. It's not happening. And then they'll take a little bit of a break or a week later, they come back and they nail it. Yeah. That is because the changes don't actually occur during the attempt to learn. Yeah. And, and maybe one other thing that I, I don't think I've ever really talked about um, terribly much on podcasts is that errors and making mistakes mm -hmm. are, is key. And that's not just as a, you know, a thematically like, oh, errors are good. You learn from errors. You know, what is the Michael Jordan thing? I, you know, I missed a, a whatever, 10,000 of the shots yeah. I didn't take. I can never remember the quote. Anyway, making errors is good, but at a neurobiological level, plasticity is faster when you make errors. And here's why. When you do everything properly, you get up from your chair, you go get a glass of water, you speak the languages you speak, why should your brain change? Right. It has the complete operating manual for what you need to do. Right. When you make a mistake, it feels terrible because you release epinephrine and most people will tilt away from the experience at that point. They wanna walk away. But mm -hmm. if you can focus on what just happened mm -hmm. and what you're trying to do, you bring acetylcholine to the learning experience. Mm -hmm. And when you make errors, you, there's a something called top-down processing. It means that the higher order areas of your brain send signals deep into the brain. Whatever you're about to do next is really important. Mm -hmm. And so as you, it's probably best um, thought of as uh, throwing darts at a dartboard because it's just so straightforward to use as an example. So mm -hmm. if I throw a dart, misses the dartboard entirely. Like, mm. I've been that guy, by the way, at the bar in college, like really bad. I've not great binocular vision, which is ironic because I study vision. But <laughs> So if I close one eye, I'm actually better. Um, and I throw it, okay, so then I'm off from the bullseye, I'm off from the bullseye, and, I, and I'm getting frustrated. You know, it's like, ah, and I wanna walk away from it. But if I keep doing that, what's happening is my brain is queuing up all sorts of things without me realizing it, like what trajectory my arm is taking when it goes left, what trajectory my arm is taking when it goes right, why suddenly I think I'm doing everything right and it you know, hits the wall again. And if I were to go away from that for a short while, or maybe continue to just throw errors, I'm learning faster than if I get closer on the first try. Right. So the brain takes error signals and says, okay, we need to correct this and that's plasticity. So to make it really concrete, making errors isn't just good because we tell people it's good and you mm -hmm. have to try, you have to fail in order to learn. Right. It's actually the, the best portal into learning. Yeah. Your brain will not change, your nervous system will not change unless you're making errors. And this is actually what kids do really well the kid learning to walk is falling down all the yep. time. And the brain is updating, okay, what was different? And a lot of it's subconscious. It, they, the kid isn't thinking, oh, I have to bend my left knee a little bit more. I need to you know, flex a stabilizer mm -hmm. muscle in my tibialis. They don't think like that. The nervous system is very smart and it just figures it out. So focus, errors, and rest. Focus, errors, rest. Focus, errors, rest. And then pretty soon you have fluency in what you need to do.